Welcome to 7 Steps to Stroke Recovery. Hi, my name is Kim and I'm a recreation therapist. This short video will provide you with information and strategies on how to return to everyday life and things you enjoy after having a stroke. Remember, there is life after stroke. Every stroke and every person is different, so this video won't answer all your questions. What it will do is give you a starting point to answer some of the questions you may have. It may even spark a passion or curiosity you never knew you had. Recreation and leisure have the power to help you feel good about yourself. Whether it's structured recreation activities or simply spending time doing things you enjoy, we know that being active will help in the recovery process. Recreation and leisure can be just about any activity you enjoy, like an aquafit class or a walk in the park, meeting friends for coffee or volunteering, playing the guitar or writing stories, knitting, gardening or cooking, crosswords, reading, or meditating and attending temple or church. Choose something you'll enjoy. If you're motivated, enthusiastic, and satisfied with the activity, it's probably the right one for you. The activity that I like to do is I like to swim. As I think the water resistance really helps in getting my muscle control back. And sometimes I'll ride my longboard. Generally, I like to stay as active as I can because I think that's been a big part of my recovery. It's just keep trying to get back to the things I enjoy doing. There is life after stroke. And one way you can regain your life is choosing to be active. But you may be thinking, where do I start? I'm not sure if I can do that since my stroke. It's common after a stroke to feel frustrated about challenges to participating in activities. Here are some tips. The first thing to do is identify your interests. What do you like to do? Do you like to do things on your own or with other people? What do you do that really makes you smile and feel happy? Next, think about your current abilities and personal strengths. Make sure you consider all your abilities and strengths, including physical, emotional readiness and motivation, skills and interests, communication, and more. This will allow you to set realistic and achievable goals, laying the groundwork for enjoyable experiences. Uh, after a stroke, the first thing that is needed is that you need to accept that you've had a stroke and once you accept it, then you can figure out a way to uh, move forward. Uh, start with small goals. Like for me, it was walking. That's the first thing that I wanted to do so I can get up and do things. But then after that is to get the strength back in my hands, to be able to carve again and cut vegetables. It seems mundane, but it's a really important thing to do. Next, consider adaptations. There are strategies, tools, and adaptations that can help you overcome challenges and pursue what you enjoy. For example, you can slow down the activity or break the activity into smaller steps, reduce the number of rules, or use tools and techniques to help with communication and memory. Use adaptive equipment. Here's some examples. Cuffs, larger print, or use a chair for seated exercise like yoga and resistance training. Build confidence by focusing on what you can do now. For example, if your goal is to swim, start with walking in the pool. Finally, think about what supports you have and what else you might need. It can really help to visualize the activity from start to finish before you try it. Let's say your goal is to join your friends at the local rec center. The first step might be to walk to the bus. By visualizing, you'd identify what supports you need to do this. For example, a walking aid or a place to sit on the way. Then you might add getting on the bus and traveling a few stops. Eventually, you'll build up to the full activity by setting yourself up for success by achieving a number of small goals. 
I use a couple of different tools because I do like to cook in the kitchen. I have a different uh, slab chop to help me because it's tough to cut with one hand. So being able to dice vegetables and even opening a can, an electric can opener has come a long way for me. When I, um, I had this stroke, and I couldn't talk. I didn't know my name. They said, do you know what her name? I, I didn't know what my name was. I couldn't s speak, so I had to... Write it down? Yes. Or text. Well, at the start, we didn't know if she had a comprehension so that the stove was on or the sink was filling. So I had her best friends. I flew them in from Edmonton. Every week I was at work and uh, every day because she had someone to talk to, it was just progressing, progressing, progressing. It's amazing in three, four days, the difference just from socializing. I mean, it's, it's a massive thing with Lana for sure. After a stroke, it's not uncommon to feel a change in your ability or comfort level in social situations. Many people feel they have less interaction with other people or that their relationships have changed. Your family and friends might also feel their own emotions and social adjustment related to your stroke. The adjustment can be hard on everyone and can make social interactions difficult. Patience, yours and theirs is key. Behavior changes and emotional health can improve over time. The best way to start is to find people you enjoy interacting with and spend time with them doing things you enjoy. Start small. Build up your socialization skills gradually. At the beginning, you might only be spending a few minutes at a time with others. Over time, this can grow as you continue to recover and improve. Here are some social interaction tips. Join a community stroke recovery program. Review the leisure guide for your local rec center. Invite a friend over for coffee or meet at a local coffee shop. Volunteer. With social interaction, the most important thing is to make the effort. When we were in the peer program, um, we had one person that really was down. And, you know, just by talking to her, you know, it seemed to help her even though it only was 10 minutes at the time. And you didn't think you did much, but you know, you did huge steps for her. Getting back into the community after stroke can be difficult and different for everyone. Be patient and figure out what supports work best for you and your loved ones. There are positive steps you can take to remain engaged and active in the community. Keep trying. Never give up. There is life after stroke. Thank you for watching this video. We at Stroke Recovery Association of BC hope that this information gives you a starting point for great conversations to come. A list of resources is available at www.srabc.ca.